So, must be kind of funny that as soon as you start reciting, I run out of the room. That reminds me of coffee. Ah, time to eat my coffee. <laughs> You juice up with recitation, and I juice up with coffee. <laughs> We're doing our slow reading, but we should not slow down to the point where we don't realize that a lot of deeper um, understanding will come by reading on because the same topics are brought up and deepened as the text goes on. In other words, there's a lot of plumbing of the depths to do by reading slowly, and a lot of plumbing of the depths to do by reading on. <laughs> which we need to balance. And of course I'm talking to myself also. Um, I was wondering as I was reading this morning whether in this system there's any point at which it is said um, well this is just plain in inconceivable and as poor pathetic sentient beings uh, we can't put this into words and this is in the province of Buddhas and <laughs> You know, we'll leave it at that. Is there any point? Um, but I think at this point we'd have to say that this is not Mipam Gyatso's um, way of tackling issues. He's making distinctions. But let's be on the lookout to see, I mean he talks about the inconceivable, he mentions, well everybody talks about the inconceivable noumenon, which Tsongkhapa says means, doesn't mean you can't express it, but means it cannot be expressed exactly as it is experienced in non-dual direct perception. And so far, mm, Nippon Gyatso is intent on making a great deal of distinctions. He hasn't made that distinction, I think. Anyway, therefore, this non-finding of any impure phenomena, that means when you realize the pure exactly as it is, then you're not going to find anything that's pure. Just as Tsongkhapa says, from the viewpoint 
of a Buddha, from the side of a Buddha. The word is side. Everything is endless purity. So then Songbo raises the question, well then, how is it that the Buddha sees everything? And Songaba's, shall we say, Ali Alad, easy answer is, a Buddha sees this cruddy stuff, this stuff that has its basic origin in ignorance, out of karma, you see, all of these things, even thumb drives, because we see it. And that's all he says. He doesn't say how, but Buddha tunes into it. Tunes into what we see. But it just says that. So a Buddha can even see the appearance of inherent existence. Why? Because we see it not from the, from the Buddha's own side, because from a Buddha's own side, the Buddha sees only endless purity. Whereas here, as Ketan Sambo already said it, a Buddhist, if you go to a land that's made out of just gold, you ain't going to find any dirt. No matter how, how much you seek to find dirt, you're not going to find any dirt. And so... Are we going to find some place where he says, where he or Mipam Gyatso says, but, or where Taksan Lotzawa says, that the form bodies of a Buddha are included in the continuum of the trainee. The trainee shows up and the form bodies of a Buddha appear. So the radical, he presents the rad, I, what I, I'm adding, the radical tenet that therefore the form bodies of a Buddha are included in the continuum of the trainee, because it's just because the trainee showed up. And, and one can see why he puts forward this unusual tenet. So, are we going to find something like this? I, I've, I just read something today that says that the answer will be, it seems to be, no. It's all contained within this magnificent... Um, um, completeness. Okay. Uh, no, it's not okay, but uh, I would just say okay. As um, my great Gelupa Lama, case, uh, I was going to case with someone, uh, on LinkedIn said, 
um, drinks from land, which is like, okay. And I always had to say, okay, drinks from, drinks from, drinks from, drinks from. <laughs> but then I, I, it wasn't that I couldn't ask questions. <laughs> I could. Ladi Ramache listened to a lot of those tapes. And he used to laugh and laugh when I asked questions, you know, sort of needling questions. <laughs> he didn't laugh so much when I asked similar questions of him. <laughs> so anyway, non-finding of any impure phenomena, finding just the pure is the meaning of the statement in the secret essence. Tantra. Now, the word for Buddha, oh, Sangye Ni, might be Buddhahood. It's Buddha Ness. This Ni is Ness. And it's a, presents the translator with a problem. Buddha Ness. Aside, a, a Buddha Ness does not find a phenomenon other than Buddha Ness. It's hard to know what what it means. Uh, does it mean Buddha? A Buddha does not find a phenomenon other than Buddha. You know, um, you can translate it many different ways. That's probably other that all all that it says. A Buddha does not find a phenomenon other any phenomenon, but phenomena. A Buddha does not find phenomena other than Buddha. Whether you capitalize it or don't capitalize it. Um, on the occasion of the undifferentiable final basis and fruit, I don't think he's, well, I won't say that, except for all having the sole nature of endless purity, Takwa, Takwa Ramja, the nature solely of Buddha. If even a Buddha sought for something separate from that, something cruddy, it would not be found. And uh, relative to the this text, identifying the text, saying something about the text, the secret essence tantra, all Nyingma doctrines are included within two classes. Uh, it's Kama and Dharma. Kama, which is Ga. We would often talk about the word. Dharma and Dharma. We usually pronounce Terma by people who don't. I'm well here. <laughs> putting my nose up in the air by people who just don't listen that closely to how Tibetans pronounce Tibetan uh, among themselves. And then if you say to them, is this pronounced Terma? They'll say, yes, Terma. But if you listen among themselves, it's more Terma, high, high. Not low, not dharma. Dharma. As Alan Wallace says, it's a cross between a T and a D, and it's high, sharp, and short. The renowned Nyingma Tantras and so forth that were brought from India to Tibet by the Indian penitents were translated into Tibetan by them. Those Nyingma Tantras that came to Tibet early on, 
from India, were they still present in India at the time of the second translation period? Or did the Tibetans still have some of those old ones simply because they were in the Nyingma and already in Tibet? I mean, I'm just wondering, like, did they die? Those particular ones continue on in, in India? Or did they die out there and then the new ones that got transmitted with the new translation movement? What comes to mind is that Atisha, um, but I, I don't remember enough of the story to really relate it, but that Atisha confirmed uh, the existence of, shall I say, one of these, um, what, is it, what is it, 18 Nyingma, particularly Nyingma Tantras. Uh, but also the um, unfortunately, the things that I have remembered are doctrinal. Um, but, for instance, um, A great many of the sutras and tantras that are not peculiar to Nyingma were translated in the early period, uh, number one. So uh, the ones that are peculiar to Nyingma, I believe, are 18. but. Um, if you go on the Virginia site, I would think you could find out easily much more about, you know, not, you know, David Germano's THL. And then the hidden treasure text later revealed from under the ground. Now, uh, Kim Sambo is giving a brief description. I brought up something that disappeared which was his, the reference to um, his, holiness's, his Holiness speaking about the lineages. Uh, lineages as opposed, well, I don't know about as opposed, rather, not text, but lineages. Uh, the distant lineage of the sacred word, the translated text from India the close lineage of the treasure text, the Dharma. Uh, David Germano, I went to one of his talks at Virginia, and among the treasures feels like there's someone making repairs. <laughs> right here. Uh, the, among the treasures, there are even things like stones and so forth, so unusual stones. Uh, and I, I don't know what's on the, uh, in THL. Uh, I haven't poked around for a long time. There's more than just text. Um, so, um, his Holiness speaks about Padma, Padma Sambhava, hiding texts under the ground. And as, as I related to uh, Shravasti in uh, one of our meetings as a child, I went out and I, I, I thought for quite some time about it and determined where I was going to find a treasure text on my family's we had two lots in Barrington, Rhode Island. And I, on the second lot, I figured out where the treasure text was and went out and dug. And uh, I knew how deep it would be and dug, and it, it wasn't there. <laughs> so I had to be satisfied with learning by some other means. I don't know how old I was. 
wasn't very old. Seven, eight, nine. Bit of a disappointment. So. The Mormon guy got it before you. <laughs> in in Barrington. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Serves me right. When I <laughs> when I was in uh, Western Western Samoa, I believe. That was when I was introduced to Joe Smith. Out in the jungle. And with uh, Mormon missionaries. So I went with them to the inner jungle where they were converting people, which made them think I was going to be converted. When the situation ripens through the blessings of, ripens, then through the blessings of Padma Sambo himself and the person's merit, karma, and prayer wishes to reveal such treasure, the treasure text is revealed. You know, you dig it up. As I remember, I was told that the last Dalai Lama, I think it was the last Dalai Lama, hid a statue in a hole in a tree, covered it over, and then went out the next day and revealed the treasure. He himself hid it and went and revealed it, just to poke fun at people. But of course, being being a Dalai Lama, he, you know, he was, it wasn't that he didn't have belief, but he felt too much of this was being done. I made my own attempt, but I didn't hide something. So, why, this is called the, the near lineage, and what close lineage, Nyegyu. Why is it called close? Because the blessings of Padma Sambo are still there. It's close. Whereas these other texts, uh, translated texts, they're distant. But the blessings have a shelf life? <laughs> <laughs> no. Because but uh, Padma, uh, Padma, Padma Sambhava knows that there are certain people who are going to dig them out in the future. No shelf life. And then the profound lineage of pure visionary experience. And these are very interesting texts that dawn in spiritual experience. So this one that, you know, we published from uh, the Three Keys. Text that dawn in spiritual experience. This was, huh? Patro Rinpoche, yes. Patro Chime Chagyoma. And then dawn in spiritual experience. Then text that dawn to the mental consciousness. And text that actually dawn to sense consciousnesses. So that means you actually get a text in your hands. You can see it, feel it, show it to somebody else, I guess, must be. But, and so you see, in his text, he raised up as treasure from the vastness of wisdom. And he talks about it as from the dynamism, zel, of the innermost awareness. So this was not to his mental consciousness and not, not to the sense consciousness, but as, as part of spiritual experience. You know, is, mental consciousness, I guess, means something, you know, you just see it. Whereas from the innermost awareness, you can see why it's called spiritual experience. When I 
lived for five years at the monastery in New Jersey, <laughs> there's a lot of, I figure there's a lot of people came to the monastery who, not to belittle what they were experiencing, but I guess I am belittling it. There's a lot of junk that appears. You know, in when people meditate, right? When I meditate, also, a lot, it's a lot of junk. What is it called in uh, Zen? I forget. Anyway. I think it's uh, Makyo. Yeah, Makyo. Like devils or something. Is it? Is that the literal I meaning? It's supposed to be like devilish things. Yeah, junk. So, how one discriminates between junk and stuff that's really worth paying attention to is a persistent problem. So, the fact that His Holiness has a more detailed description in his assemble doesn't, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I'm sure if Kazen Sambo wanted to go into more detail, uh, he could. So the Secret Essence Tantra is concluded word kind of category. Um, and then uh, there's a repetition of what appeared above, which I left in, because it says it slightly differently which is just due to my doing two translations. And I left it in, figuring that the repetition was okay. That's due, but that's due to the translator, not to him. Now, I'm not, he, well, here it says, it, it used to say in terms of the mode of appearance, uh, you, the, the Tibetan is in terms of the, in, from the viewpoint of the power of the mode of appearance. But, but this is a very common, the impact of the mode of appearance. If we take into account, ah, if we take into account the mode of appearance rather than the mode of abiding, the basis itself has not already ripened into the fruit state. You know, looked at from the point of view of the mode of appearance, the basis itself has not already ripened into the fruit state. In other words, we wouldn't talk about ripening into the fruit state except from the point of view of the mode of appearance. It's only from the point of view of the mode of appearance that we even get into talking about ripening into the fruit state or not ripening into the fruit state. If we talk only about the basis these terms, ripened or not ripened, don't have any relevance. The basis, if we, if we think just in terms of the basis, ripened, not ripened, there's no relevance. That's the point here.
Now, if we do look at it, he says, in terms of the mode of appearance, then then you get into, you'd have to say all of this that is now going to be said. You'd have to say the basis is still in the company of adventitious defilements. But he, he's going to say, he's eventually going to say, you would think this, but you'd be wrong. Because from the point of view of the basis itself, all of this talk about being in the company of defilements, and there are still being obstructions yet to be abandoned. So you see, if you jump down, he says, indeed, you'd have to say that it's just a seed of a Buddha's body of attributes. But we really don't want to say that. We really don't want to say it's just a seed. Because he says, nevertheless, if we jump down to there, in terms of the impact of just the primeval basal time, that is to say, in terms of the primordial mode of abiding itself, not in terms of appearances. In other words, don't get carried away about appearances. They're just, these conventions of release and mistake don't apply. And in terms of the basis, there's no sentient beings, there's no Buddhas. The basis having been realized, then you're Buddha, you attain Buddhahood. It's having been mistaken, then you wander into cyclic existence. But in terms of the basal time, the time of the basis, none of that's occurred. And then if you go down, When basal appearances, when appearances of the basis, but that means from the, from the dynamism, dawn, then you get release, you get mistake, release arises from realizing the basis as it is as it really is, a mistake arises from not realizing the basis. In case Zombo says, identifying the natural face, the face is often used in East Asian Buddhism, the na and, and that word ngo in it means face in Tibetan, it also means entity. The natural entity, the natural face of basal appearances, then you're released. Whereas not identifying it, you're mistaken. That's how you get the two paths of release and mistake.
and then he repeats it with, you know, a little different vocabulary. Then back to Mipam Gyatso, when basal appearances or appearances of the basis themselves at dawn, from realizing them, one's going to release of, interesting, prime, primeval essential purity. Then you're a Buddha of manifest realization. whereby the ten powers and so forth exist manifestly. So that suggests that the ten powers were there previously. You see, he wants to avoid saying there was just a seed there earlier. From knowing or identifying basal appearances as being just this body of attributes that has no need for adjustment. That has no need for adjustment. You are Buddhified. So you see, you're actualizing what's already there, rather than producing. You're actualizing rather than producing. And you have manifested the fruit of Buddhahood, endowed with all of its requisite attributes. So here we go. Here's your answer, maybe. <laughs> Although the powers and so forth of a Buddha exist in the manner of primordial endowment, in the non-abiding nirvana, in the body of attributes of the basal state. So we have a body of attributes of the basal state. If, uh, if you don't want to use the word seed, why do you use the word fruit? Of Buddhahood. The fruit uh, comes from a seed. Uh, 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 that's because you have actualization in, man you have manifest actualization. That's what fruit means. What? That sounds like samkhyas. It does. That's why, that's why Buddhists have to be careful not, I always say, even for Gelupas, one has to be careful not to put down Sankhya too hard. Because you're going to find out that, that the strands, and I carefully use the word strands, of Sankhya appear in Buddhism. You see the strand, there are three strands. The, <laughs> the, the uh, three subtle minds are even called Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas in the highest Yoga Tantra of Guya Samaja. They're even called that. Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. White, red, and black. And the fundamental innate mind of clear light is in some ways a lot like the pure consciousness of some ways of Sankhya. Some ways. And even we'll see down below here the use of the 
phraseology of not stirring. not stirring from within the fundamental innate mind of clear light which is used in Goya Samaja is going to be used here in um, down below. <laughs> Therefore, whether all the attributes of this basis appear manifestly or not, you see, appear manifestly or not, is not from the side of the basis itself. So you see, this is the difference between fruit and fruit time and basis, basal time. Rather, this is Mipam. The differentiation must be made relative to the appearance perspective, Nango, of a Buddha. This is really packed. This is the distinction. Who realizes that basis just as it is. Okay. So. Whether all the attributes of this basis appear manifestly or not is not made from the side of the basis itself. The differentiation must be made relative to the appearance perspective of a Buddha and the appearance perspective of sentient beings who do not realize that basis just as it is. How it appears to us and how it appears to a Buddha But as far as the original basal noumenon, the next sentence, as far as it goes, immutable whether at a time of cyclic existence or at a time of nirvana, this basal Numenon is called, uh, what word do you want for nyukma? Genuine? I don't think it works. I think fundamental works. I do too. Yeah, thanks. So, so we have genuine, what else did we have? Genuine, what were the other words that we had? Uh, Non-artificial, that's the dictionary, Machirba. Non-artificial, which isn't good, I mean, I'll just say it. It's not good because it's a negative term. And Nyukma is, is a positive term. So, non-artificial tells you something. The dictionary definition helps. It's non-artificial. Clearly enough. And that's for how people get genuine. And genuine's good, no question. But from this sentence, At least in this sentence, fundamental is good. And I'll bet we'll find some other sentence where genuine will be good. So, hooray for fundamental. <laughs> is called, oh yeah, His Holiness is, I don't know if he's, if he's necessarily uh, chose innermost, you know, trying to zero in on Nyukma, but he's certainly uh, 
for new malanji ki ave so ki sem in goya samaja um uh, he you know in the most probably as i was saying because the trigger is in the inside the small case inside the heart probably you know the, the innermost mind when you the you have the three subtle minds and deeper than that deeper than that is the fundamental innate mind of clear light Kizambo, the Buddha matrix pervades the continuums of all sentient beings like the oil that pervades a sesame seed being everywhere throughout the seed. You, when you press, press the seed, it's not that, or, you know, it's not that the oil is just inside the um the two halves of the husk of the uh husk right the two halves of the outside of the seed it's throughout the throughout all of the <clears throat> sesame seed it's in those two halves and when you open up the seed, there might be some in the middle too, right? Why not? But it's it's throughout the 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 material of the outside of the seed too. It's throughout it, and this is essential to the Nyingma doctrine of where Rikpa is. It's throughout all of our consciousnesses. That's why you don't have to stop your consciousnesses to notice. You don't have to stop desire, hatred, and so forth. And actually, I, w I want to listen to uh, Kaden Sambo very carefully on this. You don't have to stop your sense consciousnesses and so forth. Uh, I want to notice, make sure he says, stop this, don't have to stop the sense consciousnesses. Or, what actually, what I want to listen to is that you can notice the Rikpa in the sense consciousnesses. Surely it is said you can notice Rikpa in every single conceptual consciousness. But I would say also, but I'll stand corrected if I'm wrong, in every single form of consciousness. You see, in Geluk, you have to stop all of these grosser forms of consciousness in order to manifest the fundamental innate mind of clear light. Stop. Whereas in Nyingma, you don't. You can catch Rikpa in the midst of anything. And if you read His Holiness's text, you can catch it, and then you can get more and more and more of it. And the conceptual element will become less and less and less. And as you read this book, Mipam Gyatso and Kizu Sambo Ramche, 
you'll see the same teaching. It's not that you tune into Rikpa and you get, you can only get the whole thing. Of course, if you get the whole thing, then you're Buddha. You, you have simultaneous enlightenment, also called sudden enlightenment, if you got the whole thing. But it's very clear in both His Holiness and Mipam Gyatso with Kishin both, but both said, it'll increase, increase, increase. And conceptuality will decrease, decrease, decrease. As you pay attention to this which you got a hold of. Does that mean sense consciousness is also uh, act this way? Are pervaded by. I mean, there's a conceptual consciousness, but also the sense consciousness is act in the same way where you can perceive it and then they decrease little by little? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> you raise such beautiful questions. In retract, I, I, I will answer yes. Retract. Your ability to retract from them. I will say, I, I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll give you a qualified yes. Not that you would have to, but your ability to, to pay attention to a deeper element within them. But I said I, right? Okay. See you in a week. <laughs>